The universe is pretty humongous. The incomprehensible scale of its chaotic beauty reaches outward, seemingly forever, to worlds beyond our own. But it also reaches inward, to worlds within the human mind. There are landscapes of thoughts and emotion that lay dormant between the musical notes of our favorite songs. And the words of faceless screenwriters reach us in ways that our closest friends and families never could. In life, there are things to hide from. We hide from the world around us, behind our phones and televisions. We hide our feelings from one another for fear of judgment. We hide from ourselves and the lives that we live. Today we examine escapism, the act of seeking distraction and shelter from the unpleasant realities through entertainment and engaging in fantasy. But at what cost? Are you looking for answers? Will you find only questions? Ben Hawkins for men, Ben Hawkins for men, Ben Hawkins for men. For men. Welcome to Ben Harkins for Men, the show where you and I face life's most persistent questions with the help of my team of ultra-qualified truth-sayers and experts. Our first expert of the evening on the subject of escapism is Abyssal consultant Thomas Lundy. Thank you for coming, Thomas. Thank you for having me. Now, Thomas, in your informed opinion, why do we need escapism? Well, Ben, scientists estimate that there are over 10 quadrillion observable molecules in the known universe. Every single one of those molecules is dictated by an intricate system of cause and effect. I'm here to tell you that perfect machine's sole focus is making lasting happiness unattainable for you. Have you ever noticed that everything you strive for is ultimately unsatisfying? Every challenge met feels good until the end of your life sets in? Have you ever ran for the bus and actually made it? A fleeting moment of genuine accomplishment followed by great. Now I'm on my way to work. Finishing a book never feels as good as telling everyone that you're reading a book. Every cup in your cupboard is either too big to use or too small to fit your hand inside to clean. When was the last time you looked at an old trophy and actually felt good? To top it all off, chapstick doesn't even work and no one's talking about it. Look, there are two types of people in this world. The sandwich artist or the guy with ranch dressing all over his face and shirt. You are neither of these champions. Instead, you fall somewhere in the middle. Only service you provide to the world is participation. It's not special, but we do appreciate it. Sure, life is grim, but you do have options. Retreat, run, hide. I'm talking about escapism. When reality becomes too much to bear or just boring, escapism. Go ahead, skip work, read a Harry Potter novel in one sitting. Don't even get up to pee, just go. Binge watch Netflix. What show? All of them. You got time. Spend a week squatting in a warehouse making abstract art. Don't even worry about not being talented. That's why it's abstract. The world is full of escapist trapdoors. For example, model trains, alcoholism, rush cover bands, a disturbing obsession with Japanese culture. It's escapism, a choice for when there isn't one. Now, Thomas, what would you say to a young man who is uh, suffering from uh, video game and pornography addiction and the escapist fortress that they have built around themselves has now become sort of an inescapable tomb of which they cannot escape? Well, Ben, I'd say honestly, sounds like about as good as it gets. Thank you very much, Thomas. Our next guest is a professor of the Sociological Studies in the Unfounded and author of the nonfiction bestseller, Six Ways to Spell the Word No, Dr. Catherine Murphy. Thank you for having me. Now, Dr. Murphy, uh, what are your thoughts on escapism as a coping mechanism in the modern world? Thank you for asking. Well, escapism is actually not a coping mechanism. It's a blanket concept covering the entirety of human consciousness. 
Your brain is constantly rewriting your experiences. You subconsciously misremember things that happened to you years ago or even moments ago. You project false purpose and meaning onto yourself and others to justify your choices within an otherwise chaotic and meaningless life. Your understanding of everything that has ever happened to you is almost entirely fiction and you live in a constant state of falsehood and denial. Ben, could you please give us one of your memories, maybe one where you uh, felt unequivocally happy? Yes. Um, well, uh, when I was a boy, I, um, I was uh, eating my breakfast and my dog came up to me and uh, I smiled at him and he smiled back at me and I uh, fed him a piece of my waffle. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. This is most likely a collection of emotional, neutral moments adjacent to the traumatic ones that you collage together to make a fictional memory of happiness that you actually never felt. It never happened. That, that's fascinating, uh, because here I thought that I uh, once shared a uh, joyous memory with a, a cherished friend when uh, actually uh, friendship is just a trick that my mind is playing on me to keep me from going insane. <laughs> that's exactly right, Ben. In this lie, you projected human emotion onto your childhood pet. That dog was not your friend. Dogs don't smile. Actually, that's just how a dog's face looks. After hundreds of years of domestication, a dog has learned not to bite the hand that feeds it breakfast. Yet, if you saw the same dog for the first time, maybe under different circumstances, say, lost in the woods, that dog would see your tiny, smiling child body and think, oh, look, there's breakfast. Of course, a dog doesn't think as a human does, let alone in the language of English. <laughs> Even now, I'm reducing a dog's genetic survival tactics into something more relatable to the average human. <laughs> in summary, uh, your memories are lies, uh, making the concept of escapism as a coping mechanism completely invalid. You're trapped forever, given that your reality is already an inescapable delusional fantasy. Ben? Uh, Dr. Catherine Murphy, thank you uh, very much for, thank you for your input. Our next and final expert lives on the razor's edge between the human mind and the human body. It is my pleasure to introduce spiritual movement instructor Tim Ledwith. Now, Tim, it is a pleasure to have you. Glad to be here. Now, uh, Tim, a lot of people are, are feeling very lost in the modern world. They, uh, they uh, lean on escapism as a means of uh, getting through the stress of their daily lives. And, and uh, if, if you could tell, uh, give us some advice for those who are feeling lost in the modern world. Well, uh, I think what I turn to is a story that's been told to me uh, and then I think it's a great uh, symbolic metaphor for how we as humans escape and we don't like to deal with the reality that we're in. Uh, and it has to do with people being lost out at sea. There were, uh, we, right. we think about in our culture how much we, we, we prop up the turtle, how the turtle is so, is so great. And that stems from the fact when people would be lost out to sea, uh, the, there were all these stories of these giant turtles taking people to shore. Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with those stories, but um, yes, please go on. Uh, so, what people don't realize, or they do realize, and they don't want to accept this reality, is that the, the, there was just as many turtles that took people further out to sea. Right, because that story would not come back. Uh, how would we hear that story if they didn't? No, there was back? exactly and as many turtles that took people further out to sea. And I'm not, I'm not sure how we could brought them in. confirm that. As we know, turtles are serpentines. There's really, it, really inside of that shell is another snake. A snake is the ultimate expression of freedom. A serpentine, right? Think about the, think, think about the world we live in, right? Mm -hmm. The worst, worst things that humans do to each other, that we do to ourselves. It doesn't come from here. It doesn't the come mind. from there. The heart. It doesn't come from... It, it, it comes from your limbs. Yes, your, your arms and your legs. What your does the punching, are... what does the kicking, what does the, the strangling, what does the shooting of the gun? Yeah, okay, I see you know what, what I mean. The, the, it's uh, the limbs. The limbs that carry out the yes. uh, illest of But if you were a tube, 
in, and in my experience, my, the only way that I know for me that I can truly just go into a place where I am a tube is through rhythmic movement. And you were actually going to show me uh, a spiritual exercise um, for uh, aligning your mind and body mm -hmm. uh, for those who are lost. And I, th I would love for you to show me some of that. So um, let's go eat ourselves. So, on the theme of serpentines and becoming a tube, life, uh, uh, escapism. escapism. Yeah. yeah. Start with your fingers. Yeah. Wrist, elbow, shoulder, shoulder, elbow, wrist. Right. Like yeah. Yeah. You can do yeah. it fast or slow. Yeah. Stare at the sun. Right. Okay. I think I'm feeling it. Yeah, it's kicking in, right? 